is CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Let's take a look at today's top stories. Off the top, hundreds of thousands of students across Broward County are back in school. But this is the big story of the day. Long lines at high schools across the district as a result of metal detectors. High school students faced long lines at schools earlier this morning, and it was all in an effort to keep everyone safe. CBS News Miami's Terry Hornstein is in West Broward with the story. <laughs> Long lines across Broward County Public High Schools on the first day of class. It's unacceptable how long this line is outside of the school. For the first time, metal detectors are now in place across all 32 high schools in the district on the first day. It's good for safety, but it's, it's not very fun waiting. It's a lot. Um, I came into the bus. I walked out over here. Um, it's a big line. It took about an hour and 20 minutes for this line at West Broward High School to clear. Something Broward School Superintendent Howard Hepburn says he was expecting on the first day. So it takes some time to make sure that process is more efficient and make sure our kids understand their routines. This is something different for them. All over the district, students stood in long lines, like this one at Coral Springs High School. Chapter 4 over major backups at Dillard, Tara Vela, MacArthur, and Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, where a devastating school shooting happened back in 2018. Uh, it's like another like reassurance that you're safe. At Fort Lauderdale High School, despite the long waits, many students and parents say they feel good with an extra layer of protection. It's best, you know, they do what they have to do to keep the, the kids safe. Uh, for the safety of everyone, I think it's vitally important. Others, though, with some concern. And this is like an airport, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, school shouldn't be treated like an airport. It's definitely going to be a little hectic getting to class in the morning. I'm worried about, like, being late. But the superintendent says safety is the district's number one priority, and he believes it will get easier as students learn what they need to take out of their bags before going through the metal detectors. If you add one additional minute for per kid, it does add an hour or more to the whole process. So it's about efficiency. We'll, we'll correct some of those things. I think they'll figure it out. It's just the first day they have to figure out some kinks. CBS Miami is helping you get ready for back to school, whether you have kids or not. Coming up tomorrow, when there's an active shooter, time is of the essence. How officials are literally mapping out the quickest route to save lives. And AI is everywhere. On Wednesday, how it's being embraced to transform the future in and out of the classroom. Plus, where do your tax dollars go? We are following the money trail. That's Thursday starting at 6. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And taking a live look outside, all of South Florida is feeling the heat once again, and heat advisories are in effect. Next weather meteorologist Cindy Pressler lets us know if there will be any relief in sight. Cindy? I don't see a lot of it. I think maybe by the weekend, maybe our dew points will drop a little bit, and that's just because of a proposed front that wants to get close to us. But other than that, oh, heat is the story. Look at these. It feels like temperatures 107 in Key West. As a matter of fact, here in Miami, the feels like temperature or heat index 104 for four straight hours. So that's why we have a heat advisory in effect. We're expecting it to continue to be hot and humid at least through Wednesday at this point. Maybe a better chance for rain on Thursday. Thursday. Easterly winds will push any storms we get along the coast, push them over the interior and the west side. So we're not going to see a lot of rain here. And we're tracking soon to be Ernesto. Still waiting on that for it to strengthen and see what happens with that. Heat advisory that'll end at 6 o'clock for Miami Dade and Broward, but up to 7 o'clock for the Keys. We've had those high heat indices today. As a matter of fact, we've had 32 days so far this year where there has been a heat advisory issued for Miami Dade County. Last year, at this time it was 17 so it's been hotter this year and that heat is also helping to develop some of these showers and thunderstorms look how they've been blowing up here on the west side in monroe county and now into the broward county we've got a couple of storms here but everything pushing off to the west so we're not expecting anything here along the metro area because we've got that flow pushing everything that direction so this line of thunderstorms weak steering currents so that's why they're just blowing up out there in the everglades a lot of lightning some heavy downpours could be some gusty wind with this we'll keep you uh, keep an eye on that also to uh, just uh, everything's out here in the Everglades right now everything is going to head that direction off to the west northwest so that's what we're expecting for this evening we've got a little bit of Saharan dust it's a shallow layer but it's there also helping to keep the rain chances low best ranch rain chance Thursday and Friday and that's about a 50 percent chance uh, so for today 
easterly flow, scattered thunderstorms over the inland areas over the next couple of days. We have a front that wants to come in. Doubt that it's going to get here, but we're going to paint it on there anyway. Overall, we're just going to keep an eye on the tropics. We're still waiting for this system to strengthen as it makes its way off to the west northwest. It uh, does not have a name yet. It would be the fifth name storm of the season if we get it, and it is expected to do so and then turn to the right and become a category two hurricane by the time we get into the end of the week. We've got watches definitely over the islands out there, so this is something we're going to be tracking. Temperatures stick in the lower 90s. Of course, it feels like temperatures will be higher. Best chance for rain Thursday and Friday. New details this afternoon after an eight foot sinkhole opened up in Tamarack. Chopper 4 was over the scene. This is along Prospect Road and 20th Avenue. Crews repairing the sinkhole say it was related to a project overseen by the city of Fort Lauderdale. We are learning new information on a story that we first brought you as breaking news this morning. Police say they found a body on fire in Hollywood. CBS News Miami's Morgan Reiner reports. Hollywood police are not giving us too many details, and that's because within the last hour, detectives were back out here in this alleyway trying to piece together more information themselves. What we do know is that the call came in around 1245 this morning to the address at 515 North 21st Avenue. They saw fire, and then they found a body inside of the fire. Then they called homicide detectives and fire investigators to the scene. At this hour, Maribel, we do not know who the victim is, whether foul play was involved if there are any suspects next to this alleyway is a business that says they've been asking police for more patrols that there are often homeless people in the alleyway another neighbor also told me that there are often homeless people in the alleyway but nothing like this has ever happened before it's uh, really surprised me i'm shocked because uh, uh, it's never happened here in this neighborhood i suppose we just have some maybe episodes of homeless people or a bit crazy, uh, but that's it. Now Hollywood police are asking for your help, the community's input. They said if you have any information that you can contact them directly or you can submit a tip anonymously through Broward Crime Stoppers. That number is 954-493-TIPS. In Hollywood, Morgan Reiner, CBS News, Miami. The northbound lanes of I-95 in Broward County are now back open. That's after a pedestrian was struck and killed in the early hours of the morning. Chopper 4 was over the scene. This is at 95 north of Sheridan Street. According to FHP, a man was walking on the highway after he was involved in a crash. That's when he was hit by a car. That car did not stop. He was then hit by several other vehicles. The victim has not been identified. The westbound lanes of the 836 are also back open. It's following a fatal crash. This is a look at the scene just after midnight in the area of Lejeune Road. According to the Florida Highway Patrol, a pedestrian was struck and killed by a car. No word on what the pedestrian was doing on the road or if the car stayed on the scene. North Miami has reopened at City Hall following a cyber attack. City Hall is open with limited services. The attack impacted some of their internal systems. The investigation remains underway. It's to understand how the attack happened and the extent of the impact on the city. CBS News Miami's Nakaya Carrero is at City Hall. Her full report is coming up tonight at 5. Turning now to the latest in the race to the White House. Tonight, former President Donald Trump is expected to do an interview with Elon Musk, the owner of X. This after the Trump campaign said it was hacked over the weekend. Trump blamed Iran for the alleged hack. Both Politico and The Washington Post reported they received what appeared to be internal Trump documents. That includes research on Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, from an anonymous email account. What I think we're seeing is the Russification of Iranian information operations. So far, Iran's representative to the United Nations has ignored CBS News' requests for comments on those claims. An early morning blast off, all in the name of progress. What is on board the SpaceX rocket when we come back? 
Welcome back to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Guest. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket blasted off from the Kennedy Space Center earlier this morning. It was carrying 23 more Starlink Internet satellites. It was the third Falcon 9 flight in three days. That includes two from Cape Canaveral. All three flights were successful. It is the 78th Falcon 9 flight so far this year. Curtain just closed on the summer games in Paris, but fans are already fired up about what's ahead four years from now in LA. Many are wondering how the American Olympic backdrop will compare to the French flair. CBS News Miami's Tina Krause reports. The sun has set on the Olympics in Paris. Workers are clearing the French capital and thousands of athletes heading home. The whole event was safe, uh, easy to get around. America's got a lot to live up to, quite honestly. I was impressed. Los Angeles residents Tim and Joy Dolman were in Paris for Sunday's star-studded closing ceremony. And the climax with Tom Cruise was fantastic. And the handoff to L.A. When the games head to L.A. in 2028, some wonder how California's largest city can compete. Yeah. We have issues, you know, with infrastructure, but we'll, we'll come up with something good, I think, for, for uh, in four we years. We don't have the same yeah. uh, desserts. Right. And many say the French ooh-la-la -la factor will be hard to beat. Paris, I think it was the perfect, especially beach volleyball settings, like Eiffel in the back. Oh, my God. L.A. will become the third city to host the Games three times. We live here, so we're definitely going to go watch the Olympics in four years. I'm not excited because I live here, <laughs> and it's going to be... A disruption. Back in yeah. Paris, these sport-loving sisters from yeah. Houston yeah. say no matter who plays host, the spirit of humanity wins. There's no enemies, there's no negative, no ill will. Everybody is like brothers and sisters. <laughs> a little magic on the world's biggest stage, playing out every four years. Tina Krause, CBS News, London. And a reminder, the Dolphins' second preseason game is this Saturday, August 17th at Hard Rock Stadium. The pregame show gets underway at 6.30. Then make sure to join us for kickoff at 7 p.m. as the Dolphins host the Commanders. That is followed by the postgame show. You can also catch the game streaming on CBSMiami.com. That's your CBS News Miami Quick Cast. I'm Nasha Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami, and have a great day.